Load workups without fire forming. This week on Mail Call Mondays. Mail Call Mondays is brought to you by Modular Driven Technologies. If you need a chassis system for your precision rifle, check out mdttac.com. I'm John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and this is Mail Call Mondays, the show that answers your questions about precision rifles, optics, and equipment. Welcome to another Mail Call Mondays, and this Monday our question comes from Joe. And Joe asked, I recently picked up my first lot of quality brass. I went with the Atlas Development Group 6mm Creedmoor Brass. My question is, is it an absolute must that I fire form these cases before starting my load development? I've been hand loading 6 Creed for about a year now. My load's been 107 Sierra Match King, 40.4 grains of 4451 CCI 200 large rifle primer with Hornady Brass. I've had fairly good success with it. Shoots about 0.5 to 0.75 MOA if I do my part. And I've had consistent and repeatable hits to 1200 yards. The Hornady Brass, when fired, has a shoulder to base length of 1.158. The new unfired ADG Brass has a shoulder to base length of 1.154 inches. So it will stretch 0.004 inches. I always bump my shoulder back 0.002 inches when full length sizing. So do you think I'll be wasting my components and chasing my tail without fire forming first? Thank you for all the awesome and informative content. I really enjoy the podcast. Well, Joe, there are a couple of different ways to look at this. Now, most of what I'm assuming that you're loading for is for long-range competition-style shooting, uh, not necessarily intermediate or short-range bench rest-style shooting. Uh, so the short answer to your question is no, I don't think you're going to be wasting components if you just go ahead and do the load workup on virgin brass versus doing the load workup on fire-formed brass. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with fire-forming, fire-forming is just simply a term to describe brass that has been previously fired in the exact rifle uh, that you intend to hand load for. So if you take brass that is brand new, then it comes out of the machines to usually SAMI specifications, to a manufacturer standard specifications for the size and shape of that cartridge. That may not exactly match the chamber of the rifle that you intend to shoot it from, because that may be, uh, that chamber may be cut with a reamer that is based upon a different spec. Uh, even if you take something like the 308 Winchester out there, there are a huge number of different reamers and different chamber specs for the 308 Winchester uh, based upon different time periods and different things that the rifle is intended for. There are different chamber specs for semi-automatic rifles versus bolt-action rifles. So there is really a wide variance out there. Um, where, uh, how many times that tool was used to cut the chamber, all these things have an effect on the actual dimensions of that chamber. So if you want to make sure that your brass absolutely fits your chamber and is perfectly centered within that chamber, then you would fire form it before load workup. Now if you're a bench rest shooter, absolutely. Start with fire form brass, go with a intermediate charge weight, uh, fire form all that brass, get it all set, get it all prepped, deburr the flash holes, turn the necks, do all that stuff that you do to make sure each case is absolutely as perfect as you can possibly make it, and then start your load workup to determine what the appropriate charge weight is based on that. If you do a load workup like a standard ladder test where you're shooting three to five cartridges at one powder charge level at one point of aim before you move on to the next one, and then basing your load selection on the group size, uh, then this is the best way to go about it because making sure that that case is fire formed to that chamber will give you the best shot of having that bullet perfectly centered every time you load that cartridge. Now the actual size of the brass, that is not what we're concerned with. We're concerned with making sure that the the bullet is perfectly centered uh, when it goes into that chamber. Now, if we are using a load workup more like the one that is uh, promoted by Scott Satterley, uh, one that I like to use myself, where we are using a velocity-based load workup, uh, then it's less important to make sure that those cartridges are fire-formed first uh, before we use them for our load workup. In a velocity-based load workup, uh, we will 
take the maximum charge weight, how I generally do it, we'll take the maximum charge weight that the book recommends, I'll drop down by about 10%, I will start my load work up, and I'll usually load in half grain increments uh, up to several steps above the maximum charge uh, limit. A lot of times I will do two cartridges of each load of each step in your ladder. And then you'll go out and you'll set up your chronograph and starting with your lightest charge, your lowest velocity cartridge, uh, you will shoot that. Now, let me back up. I will generally shoot a couple of fouling shots first uh, to bring my board temperature up from cold baseline to an intermediate point. Uh, so I'm starting with a warm bore, not a cold bore in chamber. Uh, you'll fire your test cartridge through, log the velocity. You'll wait a certain amount of time. Now, this is dependent upon if you're shooting in cold environments, you're shooting in blazing hot environments, uh, but you want to try to keep that barrel and chamber at an intermediate temperature. If you want to stick a thermometer on there and uh, check what the temperature comes down to, that's fine. Uh, infrared thermometer is fine. Or just wait a good amount of time between each cartridge. Fire it, log the velocity. Fire it, log the velocity. Uh, keep doing that as you go all the way through until you see pressure signs. When you see pressure signs, stop. And then I'll let everything cool down. And then I will start from the top and then go back down. Again, logging those velocities. And I'll keep those two tables separate. Uh, and then on that load workup to select your cartridge, you're going to look at the highs and lows because you should um, have a little bit of variance through there as the line trends upward from low velocity to high velocity for your highest charge weight. And you'll look for plateaus and you want to try to find a plateau and then hopefully it's a plateau of three or more charge weights and you'll select the charge weight in the middle of one of those higher plateaus and that will give you a good consistent charge that is slightly resistant to temperature fluctuations, slightly resistant to over or under throws of a kernel or two. Uh, so that's how you select it on a velocity base. No, we're not looking at targets. We're not looking to see how close together the bullets impact. You don't even have to shoot this at a target. You could do it in a shop, firing it into a bullet trap, as long as you can record an accurate muzzle velocity for each one of those cartridges. And the purpose of this is that gives us a cartridge that is going to have a very consistent velocity at longer range. Because uh, even though you may have a cartridge or a set of cartridges in a charge weight uh, that groups very tightly at 100 yards, um, if they group really tightly because of harmonics or because of some other factor, um, but there is a little bit of a variation of the velocity in there, that's going to open up severely at longer ranges. Uh, so I find that a velocity-based low workup has more merit for precision rifle long range shooters. And then you can goof around with your uh, seating depth to try to get your uh, razor's edge accuracy at closer range. So for a velocity based, since we are just concerned with the velocity, not necessarily where those cartridges impact, you don't really need to start with fireform brass. If you're starting with virgin brass that is not specifically formed to that chamber, once you fire it that first time, you're going to blow it out and now you're going to fire form it. And now when you come back the next time and you mess with your uh, seating length, then you have cartridges that are already fire formed and they're perfect for your chamber. Now, depending upon what type of brass you're starting with, if you're starting with something uh, like Lapua brass here, then you can go with uh, very minimal brass prep. You can pretty much use it right out of the box, uh, load it and go. I am not uh, very familiar with Atlas brass. I haven't used any of that. I haven't really talked to anybody that's used it. Uh, so I can't comment on their brass quality. Uh, but if you go with something like the blue box, there's very little prep that needs to be done. You just have to check the case mouths for dings. Occasionally in shipping, if a box gets hit really hard, uh, there may be some dings in the brass inside, but generally I've found it's very consistent right out of the box. You really don't have to worry about any burrs in the flash holes or anything of that nonsense. Uh, so it's you can generally just load it and go. Now if you're working with something um, like Lake City or uh, Federal or, or some of those brands of brass, 
uh, then you're going to want to go through and you want to at least debar that flash hole. You're going to want to make sure that you run a mandrel through the case mouths uh, so that all of the necks are pretty consistent uh, from case to case. And I would still, I would probably even go through and actually check case length to make sure you don't have a long one in there somewhere uh, so that it, that doesn't skew some of your results. Uh, if you get a case that's a little bit too long and it provides a little bit of extra pressure on that bullet release uh, that may skew your velocity results a little bit uh, if you're doing a velocity based workup so be careful with that now the a lot of what guys are misunderstanding when they argue fireform brass versus new brass is they're worried about that case capacity because if you take new brass that hasn't been fired to your chamber and you check the case capacity on it and then you check the same brand of brass, maybe even the same lot number, and you check the case capacity, and we're usually talking about grains of water, on a fire-formed case, the fire-formed case will usually have a little bit more capacity uh, than that brand new case because it hasn't had the walls and it hasn't had the shoulder blown out uh, to match the chamber. So guys get a little bit concerned with that and think, well, that capacity inside the case is going to cause some differences uh, when I actually shoot it. And that's not necessarily so. Uh, when you fire that cartridge, while the bullet is still seated in the cartridge and that charge ignites inside the case, uh, the case has to expand to seal everything up. It has to expand to seal the case mouth. It has to expand to seal the chamber so that those gases don't come out. So it is going to expand as far as the chamber will allow it as that pressure curve builds inside the case. And my understanding is it does this almost instantly. So no matter if we're firing a fire form case or a brand new case of the same lot number, so the same wall thickness, the same brass type, all of this, uh, they're both going to expand to the same amount. They're going to have the same internal volume uh, when that expansion occurs. So we're not really worried about case volume. Uh, when you talk to the reloaders that really are proponents of using fire form brass, uh, to start their load workups, what they're most concerned with is making sure that case is as concentric as possible. So making sure that it is perfectly centered in the chamber and that gets the bullet as centered as possible in the lands and grooves uh, when that bullet takes off on its journey. So that's really what we're concerned with. And these guys that shoot bench rest will go to great lengths to make sure those cases are perfectly concentric. Sometimes they'll have fixtures to adjust the concentricity of each and every cartridge that they use. Uh, they'll turn necks, they'll make sure all this stuff, and they will use uh, the same lot of brass quite a few times. Uh, sometimes they're even loading to neck tensions to where if you tried to feed out of a magazine, it would knock the bullet out or it would uh, cause some serious difficulties. So we have to be careful with going with bench rest uh, type loading techniques uh, when we're using them in uh, precision or practical uh, tactical type matches uh, where you're feeding from a magazine and you're shooting from unstable conditions. Uh, remember, the whole purpose of a load workup is to find a resistant load, to find a load that is on a wide accuracy node so that if we have slight variances to one side or the other, uh, that load is still resistant to those and will still impact to its intended point of aim if you're slightly off on powder charge, slightly off on temperature, etc. Uh, so if you're finding a load that is so narrow in that band that something like fire formed or not would cause a difficulty, uh, then you need to revamp your loading process. Now, my personal feeling I don't worry about fire forming cases. This is one of the reasons why I shoot things like 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, uh, 243 Winchester, because I don't want to go to the trouble of packing cases with powder charges and cream of wheat and doing all this stuff uh, to fire form brass. I want to be able to just take my brass, throw a charge weight in it, throw a bullet in it, do my load work up get something that works and go and then know the next time when I buy a new box of brass all I'm going to have to do is drop down 10% load a check charge series to make sure that there's no change in the brass and then roll with that same uh, charge weight again until those cases are done so that's the way I do it now I do want to know from you guys out there uh, do you concern yourself with fire forming brass before you go through your load workup or do you do like I do and just roll with new brass 
and then go. Um, this primarily is for those of you guys that are running uh, factory chamberings and uh, not Wildcats. Uh, obviously, Wildcats, uh, a lot of those out there, you have to fire form the brass to either a fire forming barrel or to your chamber uh, before you can even start because otherwise, it's not going to perform correctly, uh, but this is mainly for those that are using factory chambers like 6.5 Creed, 6 Creed, etc. Uh, do you worry about fire forming your brass or do you just uh, buy brass, start your work up and roll? That's it for this Mail Call Mondays. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, you can send questions to us at 8541tactical at gmail.com. If you guys have liked the video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and make sure you hit that little bell icon down below. Uh, that way you get notified when we release new content. I know this was a short video, but again, uh, you see we've been moving videos out a little bit quicker. I've got a couple other review videos that I'm going to try to get out this week. Uh, so we're making this a little bit of an abbreviated video to get you guys out more content uh, throughout the week. So I hope that's okay. If not, leave a comment down below. I love to hear what you guys have to say. And one final thing, if you guys are not already checking us out over on Patreon, we would love to have your support over there. We'll leave a link to Patreon down below. It's a great way for you guys to see what's going on behind the scenes and also support the video content that you know and love. You guys know that YouTube has been really not supporting gun channels here lately. Uh, it still does cost money to buy the equipment and the editing software to get this out. So Patreon is a great way to pick up where YouTube is not not cutting the mustard, and uh, helping us out overall. So we would love to have your support over there. And until next time, get out and shoot.